morning. Um, welcome to Meet the College Savings Expert Workshop. My name is Samira Uddin, and I'll be leading this workshop with my colleague, Sebastian. We're going to begin shortly. While we wait, please enjoy our introductory video, which will jog your memory about the Safer College program. Sebastian, if you can just play the video, thank you. Kids rise. Every student should have opportunities, resources, and support to achieve their dreams. Research shows that children with even a small savings account of one to $500 are three times more likely to enroll in college and more than four times more likely to graduate. Together, we can take small steps for big college and career dreams with the Save for College program. The Save for College program has two parts, a scholarship account and a savings account. To help every family get started, NYC Kids Rise will provide an NYC scholarship account with an initial deposit of $100 to every public school kindergartner and opportunities to earn more over time. Small steps now can make a big impact in the future. Here's how it works. Your kindergartner will be automatically enrolled in the Save for College program unless you choose not to participate. Log on to nyckidsrise.org to see your child's NYC scholarship account. Once activated, you earn an additional reward into the account and you'll be able to track your child's balance over time. And that's not all. There will be other chances for NYC Kids Rise and the community to add more money to your account in the future. We know that saving for college can be tough. It can feel too early or not in our budget. We're talking about small steps that can begin today. So once you activate the scholarship account, you can open and connect a savings account so that you and your family can save in ways that make sense for you. A little amount set aside every week or month. Hi, I'm New York City Schools Chancellor David Banks, and I'm so excited to be working with NYC Kids Rise in each of our school communities. Saving and planning for higher education from an early age is key. I've seen the impact that the Save for College program is having on families, schools, and our children in School District 30, where this program started. And I'm thrilled to be sharing it with you now. Hi, I'm Deborah Ellen Glickstein, the Executive Director of NYC Kids Rise. It's important that we start early so that our kids have more options in the future. No matter what your family's income or immigration status, the Save for College program is a way for all of us to save in and invest in our children. NYC Kids Rise, the City of New York, the NYC Department of Education, along with family schools and all our communities are working together to make that happen. Find out how at nyckidsrise.org. Let's build a bright future for our kids together. Hello everyone, welcome. If you just joined us in the middle of that video, please know that you can watch the video, the full three minute video on our website at newyorkcitykidsrise.org or you can also view the video on our YouTube page. Again, my name is Samira Uddin and I'll be facilitating today's session with my colleague, Sebastian. Thank you for joining us for the Meet the College and Career Savings Expert Workshop. I'm also thrilled to let you all know that we have three guest speakers today joining us from Census, Amalgamated Bank, and from Urban Upbound to speak to you about saving for your child's college and career future. We will have each of them introduce themselves in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to quickly go over some Zoom controls. In your control bar, you will see a little top bubble. That is the chat. It has been disabled for today's workshop, which means you will not be able to use the chat function for today. If you have a question, please use the icon that looks like two thought bubbles, one on top of each other. And it says Q&A underneath. You will also see a hand button. Please do not use the raise hand button function. If you have a question, please type that in the Q&A. When you ask a question, a question box will pop up and there will be a prompt at the bottom of the box to input your question. Simply write in your question and hit send. Only myself 
and Sebastian, we will see your questions. And of course, we'll answer it as soon as we can. And lastly, if you do want to leave the meeting, click on the word leave the meeting, which is in red on the right hand, uh, the right hand corner of the screen. Now, I do see that one person has joined us via phone today. It's possible that you are on your phone and you're not going to be able to see any of those controls. If you're using Zoom mobile app on your phone, there should be three little dots and you can click on that and those options should pop up for you. But if you're using a cell phone or dial-in feature, unfortunately, those options will not appear for you. Okay, so before we go into the introductions, I want to do a quick poll to see where folks are from. Um, so Sebastian, please go ahead and launch the poll and why don't you all tell us um, what borough you live in? All right, looks like we have representation from Queens um, today. So thank you again for joining and welcome. Um, okay, now let's quickly talk about what you can expect during today's session. Um, Sebastian, thank you. Uh -huh. First, try to be present in today's session. This hour will go by quickly. And if you're able to, please turn off other devices and go to a quiet place. Please also be flexible. We're going to be using technology in a few different ways and things may not always go as we planned. Also be ready to interact. We will be asking you questions throughout the polls. And finally, please do not hesitate to use the Q&A function if you have questions or any technology problems, please use the Q&A and let us know so we can help resolve that. Great. So, for today's session, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be in a panel format. We have a set of folks who are here with us today to speak a little bit about their expertise and answer your questions. I'll start by having the panelists introduce themselves. So I'm actually going to start with you, Gina, from Ascensus. Um, can you tell us who you are and what you're here to speak to us about today and why you believe it's important to start saving for college or career training from early on? Sure, absolutely. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I am Gina Pinos. I uh, work for a census, but I am the representative of the state of New York's college savings program, which is specifically the 529. Um, so it is a New York state program. Um, and I'm here to let you know all about how it works. Um, it is an account that's earmarked for higher education which is for trade school, technical school, um, also for our regular colleges, undergraduate and graduate programs, both here locally in New York, as well as abroad. So worldwide, um, you can use the money that you put away into the New York 529. Um, it is an investment in the market. The value can change over time because of that reason. And it covers other educational expenses besides just the tuition. Um, it's also good for the room and board, the books, and the required supplies. And uh, the other really nice part about the program is it offers tax advantages. So because this is New York State's 529, you're going to get New York State tax deductions. And also through the investments, there will be gains. There will be tax-free um, when you do utilize it for college expenses. Um, and on the contributions, whatever you contribute, you can claim up to $10,000 if you're married every single year. And if you're single, you can claim up to $5,000 every single year. So those are the two main features or benefits of uh, putting your money into the New York State 529 College Savings Program. The other thing is also, as the account owner, you're always going to be in control. This is your account. So you can decide when to take it out, um, what you're going to use it for. So again, very, very flexible. So also as a, a parent uh, as well with three kids, I understand how quickly time does go by and it's really important to start saving because every dollar that you save is really a dollar that you're not going to have to borrow. So that's the main 
um, purpose of all of us here is to help you all save for that um, future, which kind of creeps up on you very fast. Thank you, Gina. I um, appreciate, appreciate the, all the details. And of course, um, we'll get into more of that detail in a bit. Um, Lucy, why don't you tell us you know, where you're from and then also what you're here to talk to us about today? Uh, good afternoon. I'm, um, I'm from the Amalgamated Bank. I'm a branch manager for Amalgamated. And I'm here to talk about the savings accounts and how um, it will benefit um, parents. Like uh, Gina said, $1 save. If you don't save it now, you won't have it you know, tomorrow and all that. So that's what I'm going to talk about. How to open it, how to go about it, and what the benefits exactly what they are. Great. Thank you, Lucy. All right, next up is Janaid. Um, tell us where you're coming from and then also uh, why you believe it's important to start saving for college um, early on. Sure, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Janaid Abdin. I'm the Special Projects Program Manager at Urban Upbound. Uh, Urban Upbound serves low to moderate income New Yorkers. Uh, we specialize in financial counseling. So it is definitely important to start up a plan for a long-term goal, such as savings for, a co um, for co college for your children or whatnot. Um, you definitely want to start out small and we're definitely going to be talking about that in terms of more details um, regarding how you can start saving and um, how that all relates to credit, debt, and budgeting. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Um, that's great. Thank you everyone for your answers. Um, as you know, the Safer College program is a scholarship and savings program. Um, you may have already activated and viewed your child's NYC scholarship account, which we call Building Block One. And if you have not, this is the first step that you'll be able to do this on your own or with the support of your school. All right, so the next step is for you to actually um, open up your own college or career savings account, which is really the focus of today's workshop. And that's really what our panelists are here today to talk to you about. The program provides an opportunity for families to open one of the two college or career savings account that can be easily connected to your child's NYC scholarship account. And we call this step building block two. The two account options that are available is NY529 direct plan account, which is what Gina just talked about. And then we have amalgamated bank, which we call the amalgamated safer college bank account, which Lucy talked about. Now, let's talk a little bit about what are some of the sort of what, what is true, um, regardless of which account you open or which account you choose. Um, again, there is no minimum requirement to open the account, either the amalgamated account or the New York 5 to 9 direct plan account. You can open an account with $0 and you can keep it open with $0. The only caveat is that amalgamated bank or the New York 5 to 9 direct uh, plan account they may close your account if they see no activity after six months of having the account open for New York 5 to 9 or nine months after having the amalgamated bank um, account open. To solve this problem, you can deposit a dollar when you first open the account. So even though there are no requirements uh, in terms of putting a minimum deposit, um, the accounts may close after six or nine months. So you can easily just put in that dollar so you can avoid that problem. Okay, there are no other requirements on how much you have to save or how often you have to save. You can make deposits via check or money order. You can also make deposit electronically by connecting a checking account. Family members and friends can also help you save by depositing directly into both of these accounts for your child. You can earn the same rewards for opening either of these accounts and saving in them. And I'm actually going to go into more details about what those rewards are, which you call the building blocks. As a recap, I want to quickly show you the three building blocks and the associated rewards. As I mentioned, today's focus is going to be in building block two and three. So as you can see, you can earn the same rewards for opening either of the accounts we mentioned earlier and saving in them. The rewards are the following. When you open up your own college or career savings account, you will receive a $25 rewards for just opening that account. Then we have a $25 reward for making your first deposit of $5 or more, which we call building block three. So once you have opened up your own college or career savings account and you put in that first $5, you will receive 
a total of $75 for completing both of those, uh, both of those two, sorry, completing both the building blocks. And lastly, we have something called a savings match. Starting on your child's first day of first grade and ending on your child's last day of fifth grade, New York City Kids Rise will match the money that you deposit into your own college savings account, dollar for dollar, up to a maximum of $100, okay? So once you have completed building block two and three and your child starts first grade, that's when you, that's when you can start earning the savings match. So you can put in the $100 at once, or you can also do it over time, depending on uh, what, you're, what you're comfortable with, but you will receive a maximum of $100 uh, for the savings match, okay? So now we're going to actually hear from our panelists uh, a little bit about the account options that are available. So I'm actually going to start with Dina to talk to us about the New York 5 to 9 direct plan account. And then, of course, uh, followed, by, followed by that, we're going to start with Lucy to talk to us a little bit about the Amalgamated Bank. Um, before we do that, we actually want to launch a quick poll to see where folks are. Again, this is completely anonymous. We'll just help the panelists understand, better understand who is in the audience so they can tailor their sort of information sharing depending on how folks are feeling um, as you think about uh, saving for college. So Sebastian, go ahead and launch the poll. All right, looks like uh, we have a parent that, you know, um, have selected that they never had a savings account for any purpose, right? So with that in mind, um, Gina, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, a little bit more about the five to nine accounts that are, that are available for, for families in the program? Yes, absolutely. So um, to start again, I'd like to emphasize that this is a program by the state of New York. Um, and it's a program to help people prepare for their, their loved one's college future. Um, you can open up an account for anyone, really. You can open it up for your children, of course. Grandparents can do it for their kids, uh, grandkids. Um, relatives can also do it. Um, again, it is earmarked for educational purposes, so that means specifically higher education. Um, and it's flexible because it's not only good for colleges and universities anywhere around the world, it's also good for trade school. So if your child is not the traditional student, but they wanna become a plumber, a chef, a beautician, they can still use it for a trade school as well. So very, very flexible. You're not locked into a specific um, type of institution. You can use it um, all over, uh, again, the United States and abroad, um, good for undergraduate and graduate programs. And in addition to that, it's not only for tuition, but let's say they grow up and they want to go and live on campus. It's also good for the room and board when they go and live on campus. It's good for the required supplies. So the list that they would get from the professor, they have to go and buy these materials. For example, the stethoscope for the doctor. Um, and it's also good for the books. One book can easily be about $500, and that even could be a digital textbook. So it's really, really expensive, all of these things. So the best thing that you can do, honestly, is really try to start preparing um, by saving, putting your money away little by little over time. You won't feel it as much. Um, of course, it's good for when you first start with a newborn baby, but it's never too late. So if you have an older child, uh, elementary school or even in high school, it's never too late. Um, you still have years ahead of you. The um, other two nice things about the program are the fact that it has tax advantages. So every year, whatever you contribute is New York State tax deductible. Again, this program is by New York State. So whatever you would contribute would go into the program after, tax, uh, after taxes, and then you're able to claim that as a New York State tax deduction. If you're married, you can claim up to $10,000 a year. And if you're single, you can claim up to $5,000 a year. So that's a really nice feature. In order to do that, 
It's as simple as getting your year end statement that we generally send out sometime around January or so. You're going to save that sheet of paper and take the statement to your accountant when it's time for you to file your taxes. You simply give that to him and that's how you're going to be able to claim the New York State tax deduction. So don't forget to hand in that form. Really, really simple. Secondly, the 529 compared to a 401k, a deferred comp, um, any investment vehicle, because a 529 is also an investment. So it is not a traditional savings account that you would get at your bank. This is rather an investment vehicle. So whatever gains you make through the program, um, are going to be tax-free when you withdraw the money to use for college expenses, the ones that I had mentioned. So that's the second feature of A529, is that any gains that you make through the investments are going to be uh, absolutely tax-free so long as you use it for the intended purpose of higher education expenses. Um, so that's the other thing about the program, the fact that it is uh, has its tax advantages. And lastly, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, you're in control at all times. So as the account owner, you decide when to take it out, how much to take out, and what you're going to use it for. Um, it is completely up to you as the account owner. And I say this because when you open up an account, um, you have to designate yourself as such. Uh, we're gonna need your name, social security number, and date of birth, or TIN, to be the account owner. And we need the same for the beneficiary, name, social security number, and date of birth. Um, you can designate whoever you would like as your beneficiary. And then when they grow up and they become uh, an adult, they turn 18 or 21, they will not have direct access to the money that you've been saving because unlike other types of programs like an UTMA or an UGMA, those accounts, the money that you saved in those become your beneficiary's asset and they can go in and start withdrawing the money. In the 529, it doesn't work that way. So the account owner is the one who always will be in control, in charge of making withdrawals um, and payments. So it works a little differently in the 529. It will remain the account owner's asset. Thank you, Gina. I um, really appreciate that. And we'll pause for questions in a bit, but um, I want to actually now turn to Lucy. Um, Lucy, can you tell us a little bit more about the Amalgamated Safe for College uh, bank account? Okay, the Amalgamated Bank uh, Savings Account is a traditional savings account where you, um, the account is owned by the parent and, uh, or guardian and the, ch and the child is the beneficiary. So, um, and earns and earns uh, earns interest. I'm sorry, and uh, and it's insured by uh, by FDIC by two hundred fifty thousand that we know. Um, we offer a card, uh, an ATM card, once the account is opened. Um, <clears throat> and the purpose, the intent purpose of this account is for the child to save for college. But there are no restrictions to use the account, whether they want to withdraw uh, funds or they want to make any deposits. There's no penalties, no fees whatsoever. Um, the account needs to be open, unfortunately, need to, needs to go to a branch. Uh, once the account is opened, uh, the uh, uh, you can enroll into online banking. Uh, and then you could download the app on your um, on your phone, and you could and you could actually uh, monitor your account, uh, what's going on, and what's what what your balance is, and what you need to do. Um, and you mentioned already about not having if they don't make a deposit in nine months, the account will be closed, and and um, that's all. Oh, and if they need to make a cash deposit, uh, we we have at um, all points. ATM, uh, all point plus where, where you could actually, if you don't want to go to a, a branch, uh, you could actually make a deposit in one of those ATM machines. Uh, the best way to look into that is going to our Amalgamated Bank our website, locations, and enter the zip code, and, and they're able to literally make that deposit. Um, again, it's very simple, um, traditional savings account. That's all I can say. Thanks so much, Lucy. And, and thanks again, uh, Gina, for, for, your, for your notes. Um, okay, so now last 
pause here and see if there are any questions from our participants. Um, remember, you can ask general questions, but please don't share any personal information with the group. For example, your existing account information or details about your child um, should not be shared. So please go ahead and use the Q&A function to share your questions. Um, we will wait uh, and then we'll of course um, answer your questions as they come. So please go ahead and, and uh, submit, your, submit your questions using the Q&A function. Great, so thanks Amir and thank you to our panelists. Uh, we do have a question in the Q&A uh, and it looks like it's for Gina. Um, this parent is asking if there are any early withdrawal fees associated with the 529 and also what happens if a child doesn't end up going to college? Okay, so there are absolutely no early withdrawal fees. I say that uh, in this way because there are no such things as an early withdrawal. Um, this is money that you're saving, you're putting away, and the money that you put in is invested. The money can be used whenever you're ready. So if your beneficiary is ready to go off to college as early as whatever age, let's say they're um, ready at 15, or they want to go later on in life, maybe they're ready at 25, whenever you're ready, you can take out the money. It's at your disposal. Um, and everything is available to you on our website. So unlike Amalgamated, uh, which is an actual place where you can walk into or you can probably do online as well, New York's 529 is accessible to you online only. There is no specific place to walk into. Everything is going to be done online on our website. You're going to open up the account on our website and do any transaction on our website. So once you set up the account, you're going to have a username and a password. And simply at that point, when you do want to make a withdrawal, you're going to log in. And on the top right, there's going to be a forms tab. You're going to access that um, and there will be a drop down menu of forms. You're going to look for the electronic withdrawal form. And on your computer, you can simply type in the name of the institution, whatever college or trade school. Uh, the address, how much you want to pay from your 529 account, and payments can be sent directly to the institution, or they can be given back to you as a reimbursement. The minute that you start taking out any amount of money, we do tell people to save your receipts because you have to prove back to the IRS if they ask you what that money was withdrawn for. Again, the qualified expenses are the tuition room and board, books, and required supplies. So it is up, up to you, up to your discretion, how much to take out, when to take out, and where you're going to send it to, as long as you use it for higher education expenses. Uh, any gains that you have made will always be tax-free. Sebastian, I'm going to ask you for the second part of that question, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Uh, the second part is what happens if a child doesn't end up going to college? I know you covered it a little bit, if, but if you want to just reiterate for this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. So this money is flexible. So that's the first thing I always want you to think about with a 529. Of course, you're supposed to use it for higher education expenses. But if the beneficiary decides not to go to college or trade school at all, you have two options. The first option is, again, it's flexible. You can change the beneficiary name on this account from that individual to anyone else in the family. So it could be for another child. It could be for a niece or a nephew. It could be for yourself if you want to go back to college. You can even wait as long as you have a grandchild and change it to your grandchild at that time later in life. Um, and so that's the first option. Someone else can use it. Secondly. If there's no one that um, you want to give it to or no one there to use it for college, it's never a, a use it or lose it situation. So at that point, now you have an extra little nest egg for yourself. You have all this money that you earmarked for college. It's saved, or it's, in, it's in the program. You can utilize it for whatever you would like. So if you wanna take it out and you wanna use the money to go on vacation, redo your kitchen, you can use it for whatever you would like. As the account owner, you're in control. 
But when you do not use it for college expenses like you planned, that's when the gains are going to be taxable. It's a 10% federal tax penalty plus the regular ordinary income taxes, but only on the gains portion of the amount that you withdraw. So that's the worst case scenario. But again, another point that it is a very flexible program. So that's how that would work. Great, thanks, Gina. And then a general question for our two panelists here. What information or documentation are families going to need in order to open uh, one of the two accounts? Lucy, if we can start with you. Um, okay, what they will need, uh, the parents uh, will need the, um, obviously the social security, um, a copy of their New York, uh, New York State ID, a government ID. Uh, and the child, we would you need we need the birthday, um, the birthday obviously the name. Uh, if they have the social security, would it preferable if they have it? If they don't have it, that's that's okay too. And one other thing I want to I want to um, say tell them about the rate. Um, if they ask for it, uh, I have that for you. So other than that, that's all they need. Great. Thank you, Lucy. Gina, same question to you. So in order to open up New York's 529, you need the name, social security number, and date of birth for you as the account owner, as well as for the beneficiary. If you have more than one person in mind that you want to save for, you have to open up as many 529 accounts. So for example, I have three children. I have three separate accounts. I'm the owner of all of them. So my name, social, and date of birth. And then for each one, I have to have the name, social, and date of birth. Again, each person I want to save for. Great, thank you very much. There are a few more questions here in the Q&A, um, but let's keep on moving with the workshop. We will have some more time uh, later on in the session to address those questions. So Lucy, uh, Gina, thank you very much. Samira, I turn the mic back to you. Thank you all. Um, and thanks, Sebastian, uh, for, for managing the Q&A. All right. Um, so I'm actually going to share my screen now. And, you know, we're going to do a quick comparison between the 529 uh, direct plan account and the amalgamated uh, Safer College bank account. As you can see, uh, the accounts do have some key differences and families will want to think about what makes the most sense for them. There is no wrong answers about which account to choose. Again, as you can see, there's one account that is savings account at Amalgamated, which is FDIC in short, versus an investment account where Gina talked about how the money on the account or the value can go up and down with how the market does. And then you have the earnings. The earnings are pretty small and steady on an amalgamated bank account versus larger growth, growth potential, but also possibility of loss. As you can see, uh, Gina also mentioned about how it will go up and down with the market. And then you have the tax advantages. Again, with the 529 account, earnings are taxable versus tax-free with the 529 account and with the amalgamated account, the earnings are taxable. And lastly, Accessibility. Money from an amalgamated Safer College bank account can be withdrawn at any time. And again, as Lucy mentioned, you can use that money for any purpose. And there is no penalty for using the money in your amalgamated Safer College bank account. Now, money in a 529 account can only be used for higher education purposes. Otherwise, your earnings are subject to a 10% penalty and are taxable. Again, as Gina mentioned, there is that flexibility of you you know, changing the beneficiary to yourself or another family members or your grandkids. Um, however, that, you know, if you don't want to do that, you also have the flexibility of withdrawing the money. However, you do have to pay a 10% penalty uh, only on the gains as well as uh, that money will be taxable. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about, you know, uh, where the financial uh, empowerment piece comes into this, right? So I'm actually going to now turn to uh, Junaid. 
Um, so Jeanette, once families open up their new college and career savings account, um, they may be asking themselves, how much money do I need to save or how much money can I save? So can you share a little bit about, you know, what parent guardians need to think about when creating a savings plan for themselves? Absolutely. Um, so you definitely want to have a discussion with your family in terms of creating a budget or spending plan to see how much you're able to save each month. You definitely also want to make sure you take care of your expenses first. There's two types of expenses. There's the hard expenses, like your electricity, your utilities, and your rent. And then there's your soft expenses, right? You think like your luxury items, the things you buy from Amazon, um, the things you may not necessarily need, but you want. You definitely want to have that open discussion with your family. Um, it's very difficult to save um, if you haven't saved in the past. So you definitely also want to create a small goal of savings. Um, it's easy to say, let's save $100 this month if you haven't saved in the past. So you definitely want to create a small savings goal. And that could start off with something small such as $20 per month. If you're able to actually achieve that goal each month for the next three months of saving that $20 per month, um, then you can start increasing that savings. So like I said, start, start small. And then as you're able to achieve those goals, then you start increasing your savings. Um, you also want to take a look at your debt. How much debt do you have? How much student loan debt do I have? How much credit card debt do I have? Because in terms of credit card debt, the interest does add up as well. So you definitely want to see how much you can satisfy um, in terms of, you know, increasing your credit card payments and as well as savings at the same time. You don't have to stop paying all your debt up all at once just to start saving. You can do that all um, at the same time. Um, in addition to that, you want to make sure that you are able to, some, some months are, are tougher than other months. So it might be tough to start saving during the summertime versus months, let's say, in February and March. Um, you may not have any vacations coming up um, in February and March, so you may be trying to increase your savings during those months. And maybe during the summertime, you just keep, keep it small in terms of keeping those, you know, $50 a, a month or so in terms of um, keeping those savings goals. Thanks so much, Jeanette. Um, so I'm actually going to turn to Sebastian now and to see if there are any questions for Jeanette um, on the Q&A. Yeah, thanks, Samir, and thank you, uh, Jeanette. Uh, we have a two-part question here. Uh, one, is the service uh, free? And also, how do families make a financial counseling appointment? So the, the great part of New York City is this service is free. You can sit down one-on-one -on, -one on a confidential session, and we can sit down with you and discuss your financial goals, uh, your financial uh, questions. Um, and, and it is a free service, and you can see us as many times as you want. Uh, we can do the session um, in person, we can do it remotely, over the phone, uh, whatever is convenient to you. And to make an appointment, you can call 311 and, and schedule a financial counseling session, or you can even email me, Jeanette at urbanupbound.org, and we can schedule that session as well. Thanks, Jeanette. Um, and then the second question here, uh, if you could share a little bit more about the ser other services offered by a financial counselor, you mentioned the budgeting, uh, what other kinds of services uh, can financial counselors provide um, in the Financial Empowerment Center? Absolutely. Uh, so the biggest service we provide also is credit, credit, uh, credit repair, figuring out ways to improve your credit score. Um, if you don't have credit, we can figure out ways to establish credit as well. Um, we can also make sure everything's accurate on your credit report. Uh, since the pandemic, there's been a lot of identity theft going on in terms of uh, people stealing other people's information for opening up credit cards, even applying for unemployment. Uh, people have gone to drastic measures in terms of stealing people's identity. So um, you definitely can schedule an appointment with us. Do a, do a soft check on your credit. It doesn't hurt your credit score at all if you do sit down with us and checking your credit. We also help uh, with debt reduction techniques. If you're in trouble with high interest credit card bills, student loans, rental arrears, uh, we could see what type of resources might be available. We don't personally cut checks and help people pay their bills back. We definitely see the type of um, resources and, template, and tools and templates that can help projects reduce that debt. Um, we also help with savings. Like we mentioned, you know, we can create a, a short-term savings plan, such as a, for an emergency fund or a vacation, or even a long-term savings plan in terms of saving for a child's college uh, tuition or even um, long-term savings goals of purchasing a home. And we also help with affordable banking as well. Great. And Thank you, Jeanette. Addition, sorry. 
No, no please, please. That, we also, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, in addition to that, um, in terms of the one-on-one -on -one confidential session, uh, we don't pass any judgments here at Urban Upbound, so we're just like sharing our, our mall ears. Um, so, you know, it's usually very tough to talk about uh, finances. It's, it's a very sensitive topic. Um, even talking about finances with your friends, you know, everything's great um, during dinner, but when the bill comes, it gets kind of quiet. You know, how, how are we splitting this bill? So you definitely come, come to us and we can definitely strategize and um, talk about your financial goals. That's great. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, Samira, um, should we turn it over again to the whole panel to see if there are any additional questions? Yep, yep, let's do that and see if, if folks have just questions for our panelists. Any general questions? Great. Uh, we have a couple of questions here um, for Gina. Uh, Gina, parent is asking if they open two accounts, if they can deduct the full $10,000 per account or is it a $10,000 deduction per household? That's a great question. So it would be per household. Um, doesn't matter if you have one account, two accounts, three accounts, it is per household that you can claim up to the 5,000 if you are single or up to the 10,000 if you're married. And I'm just waiting to see, let's give folks a few seconds to see if there are any other questions here. All right, we have another question. Um, a parent asks if there are, what are, um, if any, the drawbacks of a 529 account? So the only quote unquote drawback might be the fact that, that it is an investment in the market. It does go up and down again with the market. But I always compare it to a 401k, a 403b, a 457, a deferred comp. All those um, types of programs are investments in the market for long term. So they're, they're based, all of them are based on the market. So if you have any of those types of programs, you are familiar with uh, the fact that it does go up and down. But um, in the long term, the idea is that you're going to have um, more amount for you to, to use, whether it be for retirement purposes or for college purposes. Great, thanks, Gina. Uh, Lucy, a question for you. Um, what are the branch locations here in the city where parents can go and um, um, open an account? That would be Union Square. Um, which is on 10 East uh, 14th Street, uh, Best Buy, which is in Brooklyn, 1212 Fulton Street. And then we have Co-op City, which is uh, in the Bronx. Um, that's where you'll be able to go walk in and open an account. No appointment is necessary, just walk in and someone will be able, will able to open the account for you. Great. Thanks, Lucy. Another question for you. Um, in terms of the ATM card, uh, mm -hmm. where can families go to use this ATM card? Like I said, we have the AT we are a member of the All Points. Um, in the back of the card, we'll say All Points. So what they can do is go into our website, uh, click on locations, put on the, uh, the zip code, and they will tell you where they can use that card free of charge. They will not get any, any fees by using the car in those locations, those ATM locations. Uh, most of the, I believe it's CVS, 7-Eleven, uh, Costco, right off the top of my head. But once you indicate the zip code, you log in the zip code, it will give you all the ATMs available for your use near your area. So. Great. Thanks, Lucy. Uh, we have one more question here for Jeanette, uh, who is ready to go. Uh, what do you say to a family uh, who's nervous that they have too many competing expenses? How should they think about saving for college and career training? 
Sure. Um, you know, obviously New York City is very expensive and we have, you know, we're the most expensive city in the world probably. Um, so you definitely want to prioritize your expenses. Like I said, you want to make sure you prioritize your hard expenses, make sure that you take care of your rent, make sure there's a roof over your head, make sure you take care of your utilities. Um, after you take care of those things, you want to make sure you sit down with your family and prioritize what's important and what's not important. Um, if you feel like, you know, this family vacation, um, we're not able to afford a five day vacation, maybe cut it down to maybe a, a weekend or a three day uh, type of vacation. Um, maybe that'll save you some, some extra cash. Um, another way you could save money, obviously, is, you know, prioritize how much, um, how much the cost of going out. Um, it obviously, it's very expensive to dine out these days. Uh, food prices, they go up as well as obviously gas prices. So you definitely want to prioritize in terms of um, how many times um, per week you, you plan on dining out. Um, how much you know gas you're using on the car these days you want to make sure you prioritize and see if you're able to go somewhere in the walking distance or, or whatnot um so obviously you know new york city is very expensive but you definitely want to prioritize and you can sit down with a financial counselor in a one-on-one -on -one session which is over uh, each expenses that you and your family does doing her um daily and monthly great thank you folks um there are no more questions. So Samir, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Sebastian. And of course, thanks to all of our panelists uh, for answering the questions. Um, so now I'm going to share a little bit about the next steps that you can take as well as resources that are available to you. Um, so the first thing is, if you'd like to learn more about the options that are available to you. So as Lucy and Gina talked about today, the Amalgamated Bank, as well as the New York 529 Direct Plan Account, you can actually visit nyckidsrise.org. And then we have a downloadable resource page where you can actually get a ton of information about the two account options that are available to you. You can review the building block to open savings account webpage. It has all of the information about both the Amalgamated Bank as well as the New York 529 direct plan account. Of course, you can also go directly to newyorksaves.org or call their hotline number for more information about the 529 accounts. You can also call or email Amalgamated Bank. There's, their hotline number is right there. You can also email nyckr at amalgamatedbank.com. Or of course, as Lucy mentioned, you can visit any of the branches um, to either open the account or if you have questions in general, you can also uh, stop by a branch and ask them questions. We also listed the branches that are available. Um, so you can open and connect an amalgamated bank uh, at any of these locations uh, that are on the screen. So I'm actually going to pause here and just let, let folks take that information, but just know that we're gonna be following up with an email after this workshop that has all of this information. So again, don't worry if you didn't capture everything, we will have all of the information for you in a follow-up email um, this week, okay? The next step is if you're ready to take the next step, again, which is completing one or more of the three building blocks that I talked about earlier, you can call the New York City Kids Rise hotline at 1-833-543-7473 to make an appointment with our staff. You can also email us at info at nycksrise.org to make an appointment, or as Junaid mentioned, you can make a free financial counseling appointment at a local financial empowerment center by visiting the New York City Office of Financial Empowerment website or by calling 311. Again, all of these resources will be shared with you in a follow-up email. For resources on making your first deposit, which again is building block three, you can actually visit our downloadable resource section on the website um, that actually has more information about what are the different ways you can make a deposit uh, into your connected college or career savings account. Okay. So that's pretty much it. I really want to thank everyone for joining. I want to thank our panelists and parents for all the questions. If this information was useful to you and you found it helpful, please let another family know and tell them to go to nyckidsrise.org slash events to find the time and day of the next session. And additionally, there will be an exit survey when you leave the webinar to gather your thoughts about the workshop. Please take a few minutes to share your feedback. We'll stick around for a few minutes in case you want to ask any other questions. Thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.
All right, looks like there are no more questions in the q and A. I'm just going to stop sharing here. And like Samira said, thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Okay. Have a good night. Too. Thanks, fellow panelists. Have a good Have night. Good evening. Have a good Bye. Night. Bye.